So to derive the equation for magnetic field, due to a circular current carrying conductor. So circular current carrying conductor means uh, a, there is a conductor which is in a circular shape, and through that wire, if the current is flowing, uh, that will produce a magnetic field. So if this is the situation, we have to find out the, its magnetic field in some point which is along the axis. So that uh, we have to do here. So in order to do this, we have to make use of the Biot-Sarbot's uh, law. So according to Biot-Sarbot's law, uh, a, there is a formula using which we can calculate the magnetic field uh, at any arbitrary point P. So according to that equation, uh, we can find the magnetic field at any point which is outside of that Y. So that equation is of D is equal to naught by 4 pi ideal sin theta by R squared. So we already know about that equation and we should keep that equation in our mind and it will be helpful while deriving this expression for magnetic field. Yes. So having this expression for Magnetic field due to circular current carrying conductor. Current carrying conductor. So we are already familiar with the fans and uh, fan means uh, the fans which we use in our home uh, and also I can give the example of uh, pump that we use uh, in our home. So all these uh, uh, devices has some uh, coils, they have some uh, uh, wires in the form of uh, circle. So there which it, it produces some magnetic field. So why I am telling is, uh, the concept behind it that the uh, uh, pump as well as the, as well as the, uh, the spines are related to this concept. That is why I am telling uh, this as an example. Yes. So uh, at what point of angle field can be produced in such situations uh, can be calculated using this uh, formula. So that is why it, uh, it has a uh, I am telling you that there are a lot of applications uh, from this concept. Let us get into this concept. So the heading of this concept is an expression for magnetic field due to circular current carrying conductor. We have to take circular current carrying conductor. Now let us take. So let me draw the axis first. Let me draw. This is the y axis. This is the z-axis. X, Y, M, z-axis are they? Now I am keeping a circular conductor along this axis. Along this plane I am keeping my conductor. So there is a circular conductor here. We keeping the circular conductor here. Okay, so this is what we are uh, what we are going to draw here, but in actually it will be like this. It has to connect it to two terminals so that the current will flow like this. Current will flow like this. This will be the direction of current going through that conductor. But uh, for the derivation purpose, we are not going to draw like that. We will directly draw this as a circular conductor, and we say that. There is a I magnitude of a current is going through that conductor. It is placed in YZ plane. We have placed a place on a YZ plane. So I quantity of a current is going through. Now, so to find the magnetic field at any point P along the axis. So this is an axis of rotation. That means we have kept this uh, a circular conductor along the Y and Z axis. 
then you can rotate this along one particular axis. That is that will be x-axis. Along the x-axis, you can rotate. That can rotate. That is axis of rotation. Along the axis, this is the x-axis. Along the x-axis, you can rotate this. So along uh, through that axis, uh, you have to find the magnetic field. You have to uh, find the magnetic field along the axis. So that uh, uh, we, we will uh, point one, uh, we will mark one point there and we will try to find the magnetic field at that point. That point is a P here. So P, P means it is a point along the axis. At that point we have to find out the, mag uh, the magnitude of the magnetic field due to this whole element. So trying to find the magnetic field due to the whole element at the point P at once it is very difficult. So what we have to do is, we have to take a very small element, very small piece of a conductor due to which we have to find out magnetic field at the point A. If you know the magnetic field between a very small element of this conductor is something, then what you can do is, you can integrate that equation to the whole uh, area, to the whole uh, uh, circumference of this circle. So that is a way of finding the total magnetic field. So the uh, 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 these types of uh, calculations we follow in physics because uh, finding the total magnetic field to the whole element at, uh, at a time it will be very difficult. So in order to uh, uh, in order to solve such situations, we follow uh, we do a method that we will take a small element of that conductor, then we will find a magnetic field. Yes, in the same manner we are doing it here. Now let's take a small element here, as I told, this is an element, small element I am taking, length of this is a dl, dl is a length, and dl is a length, we are trying to find magnetic field at the point P, that is at a distance of R, you should remember the concept of y over r over law, in that, uh, we have drawn the distance r, which is from the element to the point b. In the same way, we have drawn here. r is the distance from this element to the point b. t is at the distance of r from the element b. And let's say the um, radius of this circle is capital R, is the radius, and uh, the distance from center to the point p is the x. x is a it is a distance from the uh, center o to the point p. Now, uh, the angle formed between dl and p is theta which is equal to 90 degree here. Angle formed between the dl and, and uh, the line joining the line element at the point p is 90 degree. That we know. Now, our intention is to find out the magnetic field due to this element at the point p. Then, uh, how to only uh, then how to draw the direction of a magnetic field then at the point P? Then we have to follow a rule that is called as a right hand thumb rule. Okay? We have already followed some of the rules at a different situations. But uh, uh, you should know at what condition you have to apply these rules. Yes. So the rule uh, that we are applying when the current is going through the circular conductor is right hand thumb So according to the right hand thumb rule, it says that curl your fingers around a circular conductor then the curled fingers points in the direction of current flowing and the thumb gives a direction of magnetic field. So the right hand thumb rule says that we have to curl our fingers around the circular conductor. For example, if I say, if I imagine that this is my circular surface, this is circular, uh, circular conducting is there here, and I am curling my right uh, fingers of right hand around this conductor, so the curled fingers represents the direction of current through the conductor, and my thumb represents the direction of magnetic field due to this, uh, due to this conductor. Yes. Now the conductor means our element is here, whose length is uh, dl, means it is a, uh, uh, we take this is the position vector, dl. So due to which we have to find the magnetic field at P, 
Now you have to apply this rule, sorry, uh, right hand rule. So once you apply the right hand rule, it will be like this. Why is that plane? Why is that plane is? It looks like this. You have to imagine this. So I am keeping like this my hand. So my uh, thumb will represent the direction of magnetic field. Okay? So I am drawing it here. So it will look like this. If the circular conduct is like this, if you hold your right finger, uh, curly finger over there uh, on the image, then the thumb will point in this direction. That is direction of magnetic field due to this element DL. That is the DE here. So, so once you know the value of DB, once you know the value of DB, you can write its components. Components means you already know that uh, it is a vector. Vector can be written in terms of its component. That is the x and y components you can write. Right. So you already studied about in the first thing. So the component of uh, dv along the x-axis that can be called as a dvx. dvx is in x component. And this can be written as y component can be written as dv1. dv1. And this directional magnetic field makes an angle of theta. Let me write the phi here. Phi is an angle made by this magnetic field with this axis, with the x-axis, that is the phi. So we know that this is a dvx. So dvx can be written as dvx. So if this is phi, if this is phi. If this value is a dbx, then you can find the value of dbx using the trigonometric functions. That means you have to use a cos theta here. If you take the cos, you will get this side and this inside by hypotenuse. We need this side, that is why we are taking the cos theta. So we have to take the trigonometry as, of, as uh, uh, what we require here. According to which we have to take. So if you take a, uh, if I take cos phi is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse, hypotenuse is a dt, adjacent d is a dbx. So dbx is equal to you can write db cos phi. That you can write. Similarly, dby, if, if this is phi, this will be equal to 90 minus phi. This will be 90 minus phi. I'm not writing here. This angle will be or angle will be 90 degree. If half of it is a phi, remaining is 90 minus phi. Nine, if this is 90 minus phi, then how to find the value of dBy? dBy equal to the, this is the uh, this is the, this is the value of dBy, and here it is a hypotenuse side. This is 90 minus theta. If I take cos 90 minus theta here, at the same by hypotenuse, cos 90 minus theta means it is a sine theta. So you will get dBy is equal to dB sin theta. These are the two components of this dB along x and y, uh, uh, y axis. Yes. Now see here. If this is phi, this angle will be 90 minus phi. If this is 90 minus phi, this whole angle will be 90 degree in the remaining angle is remaining angle is phi here. If this is phi, Again, you have to see a right angle uh, here. This is phi. So this remaining angle will be 90 minus phi. I am not right here. This is this angle will be 90 minus phi. Okay. So if this is 90 minus phi, we can uh, take my right, this as if I take the cos phi here. Sorry, uh, sine of 90 minus phi. I am taking the sine of 90 minus 5. Sine of 90 minus 5 equal to it is a ratio of a opposite side by hypotenuse side. Sine of 90 minus pi uh, I am taking. Sine of 90 minus pi means it is opposite side by hypotenuse side. So that what you can write is sine of 90 minus 5 is equal to r divided by small r. That you can. Yes. Now, one more thing you have to see. This is a right angle uh, triangle here. So here, these are the two sides. This is a hypotenuse side. So 
the value of this can be written using the Pythagoras theorem. So R square, this R square is equal to R square plus X square. So R is equal to, you have to take the square root on both sides. So that this R is equal to this X square plus this R square to the root. Or root can be written as to the power as a half. You can write this as x is equal to, these are the vectors here, r is equal to x square plus r square to the power half. So this is a, uh, about the, this uh, rank. Yes. Now, our intensity is kind of and we field at the point B. I already told you, to solve this concept, we have to take bios root. Let me write. Using bio Savard law, magnetic field at P at the point P due to element DL is that is db right that is db here at this point db is equal to from the bios root law that is naught by 4 pi what is the current that is i i length of the element is dl i dl sin theta theta i told you here theta is equal to 90 degree so i dl sin theta by R square. Ideal sign theta by R square. So that is the equation here. Now, so dv is equal to, may not, let us rearrange this, simplify this, may not by 4 pi, ideal sin 90, which is equal to 1, R square. We know that R is equal to x square plus R square to the power half. R square is equal to, if you square it, then what you get is, that is x square plus r square. I hope you understood. r is equal to, it is x square plus r square to the power half. If you square it, take the squares on both sides. Into square, two to cancels. So remaining is x square plus r square. Fine. So now this gives a magnetic field due to the element dl at the point. See, actually, if you take another element uh, to the uh, into the opposite direction of this element, opposite in opposite direction, you have to take another element which should be same in length. That is, uh, length is dl. The uh, the similar element we have to take here also. If you take in that format, what will happen is. Uh, again, uh, again, let us uh, try to find the magnetic field at the point B. What will happen? Let's see. You have to draw a line like this. Draw, uh, you have to draw the line like that. That is R here, right? Then the magnetic field will be like this, correct? You have to imagine the same case here. So you will get magnetic field dB around this due to this element. Oh. So if this is so, then the component of this dB around this is will be dBx. Component of uh, this along the y squares is the dby. So if you look at the dby of the two elements, they are they will have the same magnitude. If you write the equations for a dby here, it will be dB theta. But if you look at the directions of this dby, this uh, the, uh, the magnetic field due to this dby will be in a direction which is downward. Due to this. This dBy will be in the upper direction. But they will have, these two dBy will have the same magnitude and they will in the different uh, opposite directions. So what is the total magnitude then? Total uh, uh, total magnetic field then along the y axis it will be zero. Why? Because they they are in the opposite directions have the same magnitude. But what about this dB? Uh, what about the dB on the x axis? The magnetic field due to the both the element along the x axis will be in the same direction. That is why they will add each other. So, this is a 
concept we should uh, keep in our mind. So we are not going to uh, what, uh, draw this case here, but uh, it is imaginary uh, that uh, uh, it, it is imaginary that uh, that uh, this dv will cancel each other when we take another element which is opposite to this. We are not going to draw it here. Well, one thing we should know, uh, know that here that is dv will be equal to zero because of the if, if the another element is present here then that will be zero. But if you take uh, this element, the dvx will not be zero, it will add it. It will increase. Yes. Now, so, we can write dv is equal to zero before my ideal, so ideal you have the x squared plus r squared. If dv is split into components, Components, then Y component cancels, cancels, then magnetic field remain only on the axis X axis, then magnetic field along x-axis is dvx is equal to what we got here dv dv cos phi so from figure from figure we know the value of dv dv is equal to 0 by 4 by ideal divided by x square plus r square we have to find out the value of cos phi from figure in triangle, triangle, uh, let me write, uh, okay, uh, this is not a word here, this is a triangle, okay, this is a triangle, I said, if this is y, this angle will be 90 minus 5, I told you already, if this is 5, this will be 90 minus 5, this will be 5, this angle will be 90 minus 5. If this is 90 minus 5, then uh, if you take, uh, uh, we want here cos 5, you have to take the sine 90 minus 5 here, because if you take sine 90 minus 5, it will be cos 5. So from figure, I can, I'm already writing this as a here. Sine of 90, 90 minus 5, which is equal to opposite by hypotenuse, opposite is R, Hypotenuse is a small r, x square plus r squared. Okay. So sine of 90 minus 5, this will be equal to cos 5. So I am uh, not writing this term here, directly I am, uh, directly I will write this as a cos 5. So from figure, cos 5 is equal to r by x square plus r squared. Now let us substitute here, which implies, dvx is equal to is equal to that is uh, mu naught by 4 pi i dl divided by x square plus r square into r divided by x square plus r square now uh, x square plus r square to the power half is there to the power half is there to the power half now, so this is a magnetic field due to this element that is a uh, dl at the point of okay. Now we got the equation, uh, now we got the magnetic field due to the, that element along that axis. That is a magnetic field along the x-axis. We got it. due to element dl. Now what we have to do is we want to find the magnetic field due to the, this whole element. So what we have to do is uh, we have to integrate this dv over this area. Yes, let's find out. Now, our intention is to find magnetic field due to, now, magnetic field, field due to 
all elements all elements at p is given by integrating the equation integrating let me write this as a 1 integrating 1 now uh, from where to where dl is a very small line so this is a total area is a 2 pi r 2 pi r is area let me one minute yeah so here uh, yeah total length will be that is equal to 2 pi r that is the total length of uh, this circular metra so we have to integrate here La, if you integrate this we will get a total magnetic field we have to integrate this one that is a dx that is from 0 to I told you total length is 2 pi r yeah. dx integrate with dx dx is equal to h that is the integration of 0 to 2 pi r that is uh, n r by 4 pi i d l into r divided by divided by x square plus r square to the power here we have a power 1 here we have a power half 1 plus half the denominators are uh, sorry uh, these terms are same then uh, we can add the powers so this is the power is 1 here here the power is half if you add it you will get 3 by so x square plus r square to the power 3 by here which is a varying quantity variable here is a dl dl is a variable so we have to integrate that quantity so we have to take the other things outside which is a constant there you know, by 4 pi i r divided by x square plus r square to the power 3 by 2 which gives a b we have integrated it so here integration of 0 to 2 pi r of dl if you integrate it with dl you will get a l you will get l integration of uh, dl which gives a l so 0 to 2 pi r is a limit 2 pi r is a limit then what you have to do is upper limit minus lower limit this is upper limit upper limit this is a lower limit upper limit once you have to apply the upper limit value to this minus you have to uh, then you have to apply the lower limit value but the upper limit value is 2 pi r in the place of l minus lower limit that is 0 upper limit l minus lower limit l l value of upper limit here is 2 pi r lower limit value is 0 here so 2 pi r is the answer yes so if integrated then uh, if you apply the uh, uh, limits then you will get 2 pi r may not by 4 pi 4 pi i into r divided by x square plus r square into 2 pi r so here b is equal to let us uh, uh, let us simplify this v0 by 4 pi i into r into r becomes r square 2 pi is there that 2 pi and this uh, 2 pi that cancels out so here it will be 2 divided by x square plus r square to the power to the power 3 pi 2 to the power 3 by 2 is there so this is the equation for magnetic field at the point P due to this whole element. Due to that whole element, the magnetic field B is a naught by 2 i r squared by 2 r plus r squared by 2 by 3 by 2. For example, imagine that this point P is, is at the center. If the point P is at the center, then what will be the magnetic field at the center of the circular can carry conductor? What to do then? If you take the point P from this place to the center, what happens to this distance 
if you take this here to the point 4, this distance will be equal to 0, right? There will not be x because the point P itself in the center. That is why x will be equal to 0. So this is the case of field, field at the center. Magnetic field field due to element at center is given by center is given by you know that if x is equal to 0, x will be equal to 0. Then b is equal to this equation, may not by 2, i into r square divided by x is equal to 0. So remaining theory is that x is equal to 0 again. Remaining is r square to the power 3 by 2. So 2, 2 cancels out. So only left with the r cube. So this is an R cube here. So P is equal to may not by 2 into R square and uh, 2 uh, squares are squares are cancelled. Only 1 R will be remain here. May not into I divided by divided by R. So this is the equation for magnetic field at the center of this circular carrying carrying control. So this is the derivation for uh, magnetic field due to circular current carrying control.